Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Um, yeah, we can get going here. Um, so I uh, welcome back from break. Hopefully everybody had a, some time to work. Um, something I wanted to check in with you guys on is if any of you are having trouble getting any of your stuff uploaded, um, maybe I can make some time before class next time to help you guys out. And we can do it via Zoom and just do it together. Oh, geez, that was my cat, sorry. Um, I just wanna make sure everybody's getting their work done because I know, um, I realized also that the link was broken and I seriously apologize for that. Um, I didn't, so when I do the online, I always do it and I just completely spaced it. So I hope I didn't stress anybody out with that. So I apologize. But um, today what I'd like to do is I wanna go over the, um, the uh, images that you guys submitted for the value studies and just have a, a, a quick critique of the work, which I think came out more or less really, really well. Um, and, um, and then also today what we're gonna go over is um, some value st uh, studies using drapery. And um, I'll give you guys some techniques on how to draw clothing, uh, drapery, blankets, and stuff like that. So it's sort of like next level, um, next level uh, value drawing. Um, and then eventually we'll start getting into, um, you know, we're, 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 we're slowly but surely starting to combine a lot of the different techniques that um, we've been using throughout the semester. The other thing I wanted to mention is that um, occasionally, well, I think it happened once um, with the recordings. If um, I, do, I do record the recordings for you guys to review for technique or um, any kind of like review, um, it's not in lieu of being here in real life um, via Zoom because we're kind of technically uh, on, you know, a, a, what do you call it, a synchronous class. So when you're here, you're, you're present and when you're not, um, you can go back and look at some of the lectures, but you may or may not end up getting the full, you know, flavor of what's going on. And also you don't have the opportunity to ask in real time some of the questions that might pop up or, or maybe just some like real time technique um, questions. Um, so first off, let's, I'm gonna change my um, screen here. And I wanted to um, show you guys some of the work that you all submitted um, at the very last minute, which I very much appreciate. I think I caught, I think I finally caught up to it at the very last day um, or uh, last night. So let me, let me uh, switch my share with you guys. All right. All right, so these are some of the drawings that, um, that were submitted. These are Alice's drawings that we're gonna look at first. So definitely you guys give each other some props in the, um, in the comments. Uh, I feel like you guys did a really good job. We're really making some good progress here. Um, uh, Alice, are you here with us? I don't know if Alice is here, I don't think I see her so no I don't see her so that's okay but um, these were some of the drawings that she submitted which I think came out quite lovely again uh, that use of the eraser is really nice here and these are um, Annabella's Annabella do you want to um, want to let us know how how this went for you I love I love the use of the charcoal on this it looks fantastic Thank you. Um, it went pretty well. Um, I didn't really have any problems with it. I had a fun time with it. Yeah, it looks like it looks really, um, the charcoal really gives it a different kind of a vibe than the pencil. And, um, and in, in this one, you chose to use the stippling technique. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's a pretty challenging one to do. And I think you did a great job of capturing the volumes of those shapes especially with the, just that stippling motion, which I know can get really repetitive. Yeah. I could have gone a little darker on the shadows, I think, but yeah, it was cool to use that technique. 
Yeah, I mean, it's um, the thing is that you just have to keep accumulating more and more of those dots um, in order for the um, for the whole thing to really start to um, develop a, a deep, deep uh, kind of a depth. You know, yeah. Sometimes what you can do um, is change up the um, the density of the because um, this looks like graphite that you used. Is that right? Yeah, a pencil. Okay, so you can change it up and have a have a slightly darker pencil on those. Okay. Uh, yeah. And this came out beautifully. I love it. Thank you. I love the energy of the line work. Um, how many different kinds of pencils did you um, use in this? I just used one in that one too. You did? Yeah. I want to encourage you to, to experiment with some of the darker. Do you have any of the darker um, graphite? Yeah. Pencils? Like a pack of pencils. Cool. So this looks beautiful. Um, it, it has a lot of depth. I think it could go even further. For example, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but like right underneath these little pats of butter or underneath this um, this dark shadow area, mm -hmm. um, you could even kind of just bring in ever so slightly a, a depth that you have like right underneath here, this really dark, dark. So instead of it, I, I can see it kind of bottoming out in this value. So maybe um, experiment with like a, um, what what, can I ask you, do you remember what was it like a 3B or a 2B or a 4B that you were using? Um, it was a 4B. Okay, cool. So that's a nice mid ground. So it has a really nice um, kind of uh, range that you can capture with the 4B. But if you have a 6B or an 8B or a 9B, you can even kind of come in here and, um, and really just, it doesn't take a whole lot, just a little bit to make it. I mean, it's already popping, but even more, you know what I mean? So really beautifully done. Yeah, I'll try that out. Thank you. All right, so let's see here. So this is Ayana. Hi. Hey, Ayana. Um, so tell us how tell us how this went for you, and um, do you want to say anything? Um, I used various techniques on this one and thought it was fun. Yeah, it looks like you used a lot of the like the scribble and a little bit of the stippling too. Just some yeah. feedback. Um, did you use a single type of one kind of pencil on this too? I used a graphite pencil. Okay. Do you remember what the um what the number of the blackness was on it? Was uh, it two B? Two B. Two B. Two B. So I want to encourage you also to to expand your horizons, especially in our next drawing, with some of the different um you know the darker uh, shades of graphite. And um, so, for example, sometimes what I'll do, you guys, is and when I'm drawing, is I'll have, I'll have like a, I'll have like a two B. I usually go with like a two B or a B, just to do my um, establishing like gesture sketch. Then I usually have like a two B or three B for kind of like um, mid tones slash you know lighter mid tones. I'll go with like a five or six B for mid-tones and then kind of kind of pushing into the area of the shadows and then if I have really significantly dark shadows then I'll go with even like a seven you could probably get away with a six b getting some really dark shadows um, but if you have like an eight or a nine that that'll also do it keep in mind these are very um I guess that they're kind of crumbly is what I would say the the kind of the, the higher number of the b's on those um, but I realized that since you were doing the optical value, it's not that big a deal, but you could also play around with the optical value um, much in the, in the same way um, that Annabelle did with the, with the um, stippling too. These came out great. Yeah, here's your charcoal. So I see you used the, um, the optical value techniques and, and then also the continuous tone techniques, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. This came out beautifully. Did you use white chalk in this too? Uh, yeah, my I had like this charcoal set and it came with white. So cool. yeah, it looks great. It gives it a whole nother life. So we'll be using some of that white chart, white uh, pastel in the next next one. Nice work. All right, is this Asusena? Are you here Asusena? I think you're here. So um, it looks like, I'm not sure what I'm looking at. Asusena, can you help me um, understand what we're looking at? Is it like a, um, 
a dandelion or a plant or um, just wondering, are you there? Maybe you're not. Well, I should have turned this one. Uh, um, so can so Asusena, can you can you um, unmute it all and tell us a little bit about? Um, let's see if we can go back. What what are what what which one was this? Oh, you're mute. Okay. So um, so uh, anyways, well, I think you did a great job on these. Um, kind of the same feedback I've been giving everyone else is to, to play around with the different um, densities of pencil. I muted you. I don't think I can unmute me. <laughs> I can't unmute you, I don't think. I think I think you're the only one that can unmute you. Did I mute you? Oh, I see. Oh, well, okay, well. I think we lost Asusena. These are the, there she is. Hey, you're there. All right. Does it tell you that I'm muting you, Asusena? Hmm. Some technical difficulties, that's okay. And these were the stones. One bit of feedback, and I realize this is um, kind of sideways. But on the stones, there was some variation and some highlighting, which I would have loved to see. You could also have captured that a little bit with um, your eraser on those, but nice work on those, Asusena. All right, and here we have Brian. Brian, are you with us? Yes. So this is your, um, your optical value. I like that you used a combination of the, um, the cross hatching and then also the stippling. Yes. Yeah, and it looks, I appreciate that you got these areas down in here, which are much denser. Um, and, um, and that's sort of uh, owing to the accumulation of the, of the marks that you made. Um, Asusena, let's see. Uh, well, that's okay if you can't turn, I'm responding you guys to Asusena who's on the um, chat. If you can't turn on, on your video or your mute, that's okay. So long as you can hear us, then that's fine. And we'll just chalk it up to technical difficulties. As you know, I have them all the time. So no problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this came out great. It's a little bit, it's a little bit on the flat side, but um but yeah, it is good like, enough. I realize that. Yeah, but I still, I mean, you you know, the thing is that you're getting the hang of that of that volumetric kind of, you know, understanding of what you're looking at. So tell us about this one. That one was um, graphite stick. Oh, neat. Okay. And how did you find I the go. graphite stick? Was that the first time that you'd used it? Um, I think that's the second time I've used it. Mm -hmm. But it was, uh, I had a little rougher time on the, that one and the next one, honestly. I feel like the shades weren't like very varied enough, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it could have a little bit. It looks the the tonality is very um is very uh is very consistent in terms of it's like you know it's not there's not a whole lot of range in terms of the depth um and again like i'm just i want to encourage you guys to start explore ex experimenting with the different hardnesses of the um of the pencils yeah i felt the depth is definitely lacking on that one mm. let's see so asusena i don't think i can unmute you um, I don't think I can. Yeah, I am. Um, yeah, sorry. I don't know what's going on with your connection. Um, but Thank those, you, yeah, Jake, those yeah, this looks really cool. It has a lot of energy in it. And um, you captured that, those, those intermediate. The thing that this, this one was, was interesting because there was very subtle highlights and um, shadows. Uh, and and very well, you could have just you know, blop, put it all down there. But this one has much more life with the charcoal. So, yeah, looks great. Yeah, it's a charcoal stick. Cool. All right, nice work. Thank you. Yeah, and um, is uh, 
let's see, Brian. This is um, J uh, no, this is not. J is this um, is this? Uh, are we looking at Joss? No. Hold on, guys. I'm trying to <laughs> I'm trying to figure out. I think out. it's mine. Is it? Okay. And um, is that is that Jay Lee? Jay Lee? Yeah. Okay. For some reason, I thought you had put um, you had put all your drawings in one photo. Is that right or no? I might have. I think so because I just did it through the um, text box entry thing, and I just uploaded three of them. Okay. Um, all right. Good because I, when I looked at them, it looked like they were all in one. So let's see if your other ones. Whoops. Let me go back. Is this one yours too, Jaylee? No, it's not. Okay. Oops. Sorry, guys. So I know you have some other ones, um, yeah. but they're not in my slideshow because I remember seeing the um, I remember seeing all of them in mm -hmm. a row, and this was one of them. But um, but I'll, I can give you better feedback through the canvas when I do the grades. Okay. Okay. So we can't look at the other ones, but this looks great. This I like that you used the optical value with your. This is charcoal, I'm presuming. Yes. And then down here is this year vine charcoal and the dark shadow. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Great. And then this is the compressed charcoal on the on the rocks. Or did you use a vine charcoal with that as well? No, that's compressed charcoal. Okay. Yeah. Nice work. Um. Again, I'm sorry that those other two didn't load. Um. I, I, I try to get everybody's images on there. I thought it would all come up like it usually does, like all your, your images in a row, but it's nice okay. work on this. Thank you. Yeah. All right, now is this, um, is this Jocelyn? Yeah, that one's mine. So tell us about how this went. So you used a, you used a, um, a looks like a ballpoint pen or a um, liner pen? No, I used the, um, the ink nibs. Oh, the nibs. oh, that's fantastic, great. Wow, that's a lot of work for the nibs, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was it was a little difficult, but I think I I did okay. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, um, I didn't I because of the undifferent. Did you use the really small one, the one that has the round nib? E yes, I believe the, the little the line, the super liner. So that yeah, that's a really beautiful pen for doing this fine line, which is why I thought it was maybe like a liner pen. <laughs> Um, but it looks beautiful. I love the combination of your cross hatching and also just how there's this kind of overlap here gives it a real nice energy too. So yeah, nice job on that. And um, and this is yours too, Jocelyn. Nice work. I like how you used your eraser and the and the really captured the um, really captured the the feel of the glass. And also just I love how you kind of captured this little wonky edge how glass kind of refracts the um refracts the light yeah beautiful job and now these this is in um did you use a combination of different types of charcoal like compressed and the vine or was it all compressed oh that one was the two to be pencil oh was it okay oh great okay so again you just use the two b yeah <laughs> god it looks like charcoal okay so try to, again, try to branch out. You did get a really good variety of lines and you got some nice depth in these in these right here, which is great. Um, but experimenting with the other um, hardnesses of your graphite can really kind of, number one, it's just kind of cool to trade up your, your tools and you can kind of get a feel for like, oh, I'll use a dark one for the deep shadows, my medium one for the mediums and so on. Um, but yeah, it is possible to get a full range of values with a single pencil, but at a certain point, it kind of just becomes really frustrating. Like for example, like in a 2B pencil, it's tough to get um, a really dense dark black um, unless you really kind of grind it into the paper. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the thing about that, the thing about grinding it into the paper is that it'll give you that dark, that beautiful black darkness you have here, um, but it'll be really hard to correct if you wanted to go back and erase it because you're really kind of pressing into the uh, paper and the lighter, um, the lighter uh, uh, touch that you can have with a softer pencil, like a 4B or a 6B will allow you to go back in and kind of adjust later. So that's kind of one of the benefits. Mm -hmm. These look fantastic. 
I love all the different kind of, I love how you, you identified all these different shapes. Did you, did you start it out with a pencil at all? Yeah, I did it with like, I think the H, just normal HB pencil. I like did a little outline of it and then I went in with my charcoal. Oh, cool. And did you do any of the kind of highlight map and the, and the mid-tone maps before you went into it or did you just kind of go bloop, bloop, bloop and... Yeah, I just kind of went in for it. All right. Yeah, these are it's kind of a straightforward shape to, to, and more or less what's nice is that it's a repeat of all the rocks. So and you can kind of, and what's nice is that as since it's a repeat and they all kind of have more or less the same um, aspect, you know, with the shadow and the highlight, you kind of get the hang of it. It's almost like doing practice over and over and over. So nice work. Thank you. All right, Xavier. Oh, this is Ryan. Xander, Xavier. I don't know where yeah. that <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Xander. Um, oh, I love the energy on this. Really, really. I think this is the one we did in class, I remember. Uh, okay, good. Came out nicely. Um, one of the questions I had, and you guys can answer in the chat, or I'll ask you, um, Xander, like, did it help? Um, in terms of the just because in that lecture, and by the way, you guys, that lecture was saved to the cloud and it's up now, but I'm running out of room on my computer and it's slogging it down. So I have to save it to the cloud, which takes sometimes like a whole day for me to give you the link. And I thought I had lost it. So I finally got it back up. So if you guys want to go back and check on that, you can. I put a link into the cloud, to the Zoom cloud. Goodness knows if that's going to work, whatever the Zoom cloud is. Um, but I did want to ask you, um, now in terms of um, composition, uh, you, it looks like you still have some of those gestural lines in there, which is great. Is that how you established where to put it on the page? Like talk about how you um, decided to put it on the page, because it's kind of a complicated um, arrangement. Uh, usually sometimes for me when I'm doing like trying to lay out my shadows, I do tend to like put like a, a very thin line on where the shadow would be. So I try to kind of make it into a shape and then I just kind of sort of fill it in as best as I mostly can. Okay. And then do you, is that when you do your adjustments and that kind of thing? If you Yes, that's when I kind of try to merge yeah. everything together. Good. Yeah, this came out great. Um, this is yours too, right, Xander? Uh, yes, I was doing, I think this is the hatching one, right? Or... Yeah, the hatching one. So what's yeah. interesting here is that all of your lines are perfectly, are straight, which isn't, which is fine. Because um, more often than not, like these, you could, you could round them off a little bit. So this is where like, say a cross contour type of a line where, for example, I don't know, can you see my mouse, by the way? Uh, oh. Yes. Okay. So see how these lines are coming down like this? I think optically it looks great. Um, what I would suggest, and I know that there was a little of reflected highlight here, but that there might be a little bit more um, consistency with the line work or, and this isn't by way of like, you did it wrong. Um, yeah. Because the thing is uh, illustrators and, and artists do all types of different um, kinds of line work in their art to develop a different kind of a feel and so it's interesting that these are all more or less straight lines, but another choice that you could have made is, you know how this curve of the cone here or the curve of the cylinder and the, um, the sphere, uh, you could have allowed those lines to mimic this, um, this curvature here and, and so on here. So, and in that way, the lines themselves, like a cross contour line would describe the, the, the physical aspect of the object and so and supply that um the value um uh, indication that you want so good work here on that so like bending the bending the lines towards the around with the shape yeah i mean do you do you remember when we were when we were doing the um cross contour where we were trying to map i'll i'll, I'll go over cross contour a little bit again today because we're going to start to pull together a lot of these different um techniques right. yeah exactly exactly just okay. kind of rhyming the line with the shape of the thing and um, here's your charcoal. Yeah, I was doing stippling for this one yeah. with a, a bind charcoal that I have. Mm -hmm. I've, unfortunately, it did kind of break uh, when I was trying to do stippling. I may, yeah. have, I may have done it a little bit too hard. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, the sti uh, usually the charcoal is not the best choice for stippling, but who's who am I to say? Um, frankly, you could. It looks great, and I love that each one of the one each one of your drawings has. A totally different vibe so there's this one this one and these could have been done by three different people 
Uh, but I think that has to do with the way that you used the materials and the way that you used your, um, your mediums. So, um, but I think this one has a really cool uh, energy to it. Thank yeah, you. Nice work. All right. And over here we have Zyra. Oops. Zyra, are you here? Hi, yes, I'm here. Hey, so um, tell us about how this, <laughs> so this is your optical drawing. Um, yeah, I kind of don't, I think my pencil was just too harsh and I don't really like how it came out. Um, I definitely want to try again. Okay. Um, I just think my hatches were just too harsh, too wide. I don't know. I just, I didn't like how it came out. <laughs> okay. So I think um, kind of like with Xander, I feel like you guys could, um, you guys could start to um, use some of those techniques of the cross contour line to describe the sphere. And I can kind of show, I'll do some little quick um, demos for you guys today to tell you what I'm talking about. Because what we're gonna do today when we when we cover um, fabric is we're gonna use a, like, we're gonna use the contour, we're gonna use cross contour and gesture drawing at first, and then we're gonna go into the full value. So, but yeah, I mean, there's just some little things like over here on the cone, it looks like you left it a little bit. You could have filled that in. So it looks like you're not all the way there, but, and what you could do is you could even go back into this and refine it. So you wouldn't necessarily have to do it over, but. Um, yeah, I just think like, it's like the whole pencil thing. I don't really like using pencil that much. Oh, you really don't? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, I have to change your mind. It's really fun. So you chose to do the same one with different. Um, yeah, this is cool. Um, so this is your, it looks like you used a vine charcoal on this. Um, this is actually um that graphite stick. stick. Graphite stick. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> All right. Um. So the thing about using the charcoal or using the um the graphite stick is that you can use it like a big like a like turning a piece of chalk sideways and just kind of you know like using it like a big wide um tool where you can just get a big nice you know flat you know, beautiful uh, shape. And I'll, I'll, I'll kind of show you guys, we'll see if I have any of my stuff here. Oh, yes, I do. So I'll show you some of that too, but yeah, it looks good. Um, and these are your, these are beautiful. Love the charcoal. You can see how much richness you have in there. A lot of really beautiful dark shadows in here. And then there's a nice distance between the highlights and, um, and, the, and, your, and your depth of, of the dark tones. Um, Cause those rocks were really, really dense in terms of color. So yeah, they look fantastic. Nice job. All right. Thank you. And I think that's, that, I think that's all we've got. All right, cool. So I'm back. Let's see. So today what I'm going to do is, um, oh no, oh no. Yikes. Are you guys there still? Hello? Yes. Oh, whew. I think I, I thought I ended the meeting. Good grief. Believe it or not, I was one of the first users of computers, man. No, I'm just kidding. I was, but yeah, <laughs> you know what I, mean? I was around when Apple came out, you guys, like I was that old. So, um, all right, so check this out. So what I wanted to show you guys today was um, about, uh, about uh, uh, fabric. And so let me um, just kind of share my screen with you guys. So um, this is a this is actually a drawing that was done by an artist um, called Nicolaitis, and he um, wrote a book called the something way to draw. But it's actually a, let me I don't I used to have it around the natural way to draw is what it's called. It's actually a really good book, very old fashioned though. It was like lit, written in like the early twentieth century, um, way before computers. So. Um, when we look at, I thought what we do is, is expand and kind of go deeper into the, the development of value and your understanding of value um, by drawing fabric. Um, this will, this, so for example, some of you may want to draw characters, you may just want to, you know, I don't know, just draw, maybe you're doing like a portrait of somebody. And um, more often than not, what I see um, from at least beginning students and even people who are just like, oh, 
fabric. I don't want to do. Uh, is you kind of leave it like you have a head and neck and, it, and then there's just this big blob of a body. Um, but the fabric is, can be really something amazing. And so one of the things I wanted to um, go over with you guys and what I'll, what I'll do when I do the in-class exercise today as a demo to get you started. And then on Wednesday, we can do a draw along too. Um, still trying to figure out how to get a photo up as I do my thing. So sort that out. But um, in terms of thinking about fabric, um, uh, fabric will always have like these three main kind of components. Um, Come in. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry, Professor. Oh, it's okay. Um, they'll have like three main components. And what the components are is, is it's almost like you're, if you want to think about it like a landscape, you can. And so one of the things that I'm going to have you guys do and I'll, I'll kind of go over it with you today, is when we're looking at fabric, you have to think of it in terms of three, uh, three distinct surfaces. There's the top surface, right? This, this part right here, which will be the highlight. There are the, um, there's the right side or, or one side and the other side. Um, and then there are these kind of flat areas. So, you can think of you can think of it like more or less like drawing kind of like a um, like a, a a berm or like a curb of some kind, and so you can see here like this line right here is is a con cross kind of like a cross contour line. It's not a perfect cross contour line, but what I want to show you guys how to do in terms of understanding fabric is the first thing we're going to do is just look look at fabric, okay? And so what I did um, was in my house. I moved, I moved Pickles the parrot out of the way and I hung up um, a gray uh, sheet. And so when I'm looking, when we're looking at this, which uh, we, which we can continue, which I'm gonna continue to do, I'll draw this when we, um, when I do the demo, um, this has a couple things to pay attention to is that there's a window off to the right, right here, at least from my screen. And the window is, is, that's the one thing to pay attention to is where's your light coming from? So when you're doing a drawing and you're trying to identify value, um, first of all, let's say you wanna do a drawing and you know that you wanna make a, a, in quotes, realistic or a full value drawing. Um, the full value drawing usually starts out with some observations. The first observation that you're gonna, you're gonna make or at least recognize for yourself as an artist is where's the light coming from? Okay. Now, if you live in a house that has fluorescent lights, or maybe you want to draw in your kitchen, and maybe there's a bunch of different lights, it's a little bit more difficult, I think, not difficult, but it's a little harder to zone in on the source of the light because it's multiple sources, right? So if you, um, next time you're at the supermarket, those are all like, the, the thing is, there's no harsh shadows in the supermarket, right? At the mall, if you go into like a Macy's, there are no harsh shadows anywhere. Um, it's all very flat. It's supposed to be a timeless experience in your shopping world. But in real life, there's usually just one source of light, which is the sun. Um, and we have electricity, so we can have multiple sources of light now. But that's the first thing I want you guys to clue in on is where's the light coming from? And so you kind of be kind of be like a like a you know forensic kind of investigator of an image. And you can say, ah, oh, well, it, the light is coming from the right here because I can see a highlight here, a highlight here. I can see a mid-tone over here. Um, and then I can see some dark shadows. And the dark shadows are always, at least in this photograph, off to the left. They're not on the right, okay? Um, and so once I recognize that, then I can say, all right, well, um, that's gonna help me identify these larger shapes right in here. And so, I'll draw this and try to give you guys, I'll do a, a tutorial on how to do the, um, to do the, our next assignment. And I wanna go over it with you guys. Uh, I just put it up uh, today on Canvas and then I'll, um, I'll just, I'm gonna switch my view here for a moment. Please stand by. I need to get some elevator music going. Hmm. Oh, there we are. Okay.
Sorry guys, my computer is kind of slagging. I'm waiting for my internet to catch up. Come on. I'm just gonna, pretty much if you guys want to do this on your computer, what you can do is, is go ahead and log into um, Canvas because I'd like you guys to um, be able to look at the same thing I'm looking at when I'm drawing. And that way you can refer to your um, computer and then you can look at your screen and watch how I'm going about doing the drawing. Um, so let me just, just pulling up our class right now. I used to be up, I guess not. Um, all right. And drapery, you can click on the, dra the drapery assignment. And um, the one thing I'll, I'll, I'll start to explain to you guys is how to, oops, how to find the hub. So let me, um, let me do a, a new share here. Boom. All right. So you're gonna do two, two drawings that are gonna be due on Monday. And each drawing will likely take about maybe 45 minutes. So it shouldn't be more than a couple hours, three hours max for both of them. Um, and that's if I'm successful in helping you guys navigate the fabric so that you can do the, uh, so that you can wrap your head around it and have fun with it instead of struggling with it. Um, on the, at the very end of the assignment, I put three photos. Here's the first one with a single point. And one thing I wanted to point out was, um, I call it like the, the point, a point of tension or the tension point. Some people call it like the hub. Um, and uh, you could call it a hub. I don't really call it a hub. I call it a point, a point of tension. And one thing to notice when you're drawing fabric is number one, where's the light coming from? But number two, where's the point of tension? Okay, so in this case, I've kind of abstracted it. I put a I put some screws in the wall. I hung a um, I hung the fabric from the screw, and you'll notice that this part right here that's what I'm calling the hub or the point of tension. If you notice, and you'll notice this too, like maybe like if you look at your elbow, if you have a long sleeve shirt, or if you have your if your pants on, um, if you look at your knee, you'll notice that on the sides of your knee. Um, that the that the 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 wrinkles of the fabric are going to pull from that hub from that high point of tension, right? So it could be an elbow, it could be a knee, it could be a shoulder. Um, you know, the body has very predictable ways that that fabric will fall. This is handy if you're doing any kind of illustration or any kind of um, character development or any of that kind of stuff, just out of your imagination. Um, now. If you, oftentimes what people will do is they'll, if you're, if you're, if you're creating out of your imagination, you'll, you'll, you'll get sources, right? So let's say you need someone sitting down. Maybe you'll have a whole pictures of, maybe have a bunch of pictures of people sitting down, or you might um, uh, have different photographs of different types of fabric. So for example, like a linen will have a different feel than say like a cotton and a silk will have a totally different feel than a burlap. So depending on the texture, this hub will behave slightly differently. It'll either be more supple or it'll be more bulky, okay? And so always paying attention to this. So in the next drawing, just by way of explanation. Oh, and then the other thing, I don't know, I'm sure there's some word for it, but I just call it like the push. Um, and so the so you have this, the gra you have gravity, you have a point of tension, and then you have the area of rest or like the pushback on gravity, right? And so this area down here is like the pushback. And the pushback is gonna rumble all the gravity's energy coming down. So it's gonna, you can almost think of it about it, you guys like water, like running water. Like if you turn on your sink tonight, watch the water, it's gonna, it's flowing perfectly. It's gonna hit the sink and it's gonna, it's gonna explode in any number of directions. If you have aerated faucet, probably not, but, um, now, if I do two points, you'll see I hung I hung another I hung I hung this uh, whoops I hung this with two to give you two points of of tension right um, and so you guys can pick one two or three points of tension um, I actually find the two or three actually a little bit easier to draw but one of the things to notice is here's one and here's two so in the original drawing trying to go slow so I don't cause any seasickness. 
you can see it all just kind of kind of folds down flat kind of beautiful just straight right now if i pull up another level then what happens is there is this kind of a of a yielding of that energy and that energy is almost like a kind of of a of a of a slump and we still have the we still have that push down below there which more or less remains the same throughout but notice here here's a point of tension here's a hub we're going to come down 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 right we have more or less like three or four here and we have one two like three possibly four here and then we have this other energy here so what i'm doing is in my in my 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 eyes mind what i'm looking at is i'm saying well where's the light first i know it's coming from this way how many points of tension one two um what do those points of tension um tell me well what they tell me is uh that uh as it's coming down there's going to be a, a a a de facto kind of a of an effect when i start to pull those two points up and that effect is a kind of a slump so it's a, it's a negotiation of the fabric right now if i exacerbate it even more and i do a third point you can see that that this this kind of thing that's happening right here happens now twice over here. Um, and then of course we get the pushback becomes less because the fabric has been pulled up, up on the wall on that other point. Uh, so what I would like you guys to do, and I realize this is a, I kind of, ideally what, you'd, what I'd love is if you guys could draw this on an 18 by 24 piece of paper, because it's a lot of detail. Um, so this is going to be your first drawing, and I'll go over this on how to do it. The um, second drawing that you're going to do is really up to you. Oh, I'm sorry, Annabella. Annabella's computer died. Sorry, everybody. Um, I get it. It happens. Um, so if the um, so and then the second drawing that you guys are going to do is going to be a drawing um, that you're going to create yourself. And so the reason I'm going over all this detail about how the point of tension is happening, thinking about where the light is coming from, and then also the kind of slump or the pushback from the gravity here, right? Um, that's gonna inform how you make your own um, still life. So first you're gonna draw my sheet. And then once you use that drawing as a kind of a, of a how can I, like a training ground, then what I'd like you guys to do is maybe pick a piece of clothing that you like or a jacket, something interesting. I mean, uh, it could really be anything. Um, but the key thing I'd like you to pay attention to when you do your assignment is think about what you wanna put it, put it over something. In other words, drape the, the fabric or the um, clothing that you wanna draw over something. So it could be over the side of a chair or over the back of a chair. Um, it could be, um, you know, you could you could uh, put it over a, a, over like a water bottle or something just for, for that effect, right? Um, it could be, um, yeah, it, I mean, it could be on the couch. But the one thing I'd like you guys to do is to try to do your own still life where you have one point that you have a hub or one of those tension points, at least one, okay? Hopefully two. Um, but again, if you like throw something on the couch or on the ground, there's, there may or may not be a point of tension because what you're gonna end up drawing is you're gonna end up drawing this whole part here, which is not about tension really. It's just about this full kind of heap of clothing that's, that's on the ground. And so instead of, and, and so in terms of looking at, the, um, looking at the fabric, one of the differences between looking drawing a, something that looks like fabric as opposed to drawing something with just a bunch of lines and it looks like a really nice hill um, is paying attention to the architecture of the fabric itself. So what I'd like to do, you guys, is if I'm going to draw, I'm going to draw this this drawing right here. So if you guys if you guys don't mind pulling that up on your canvas page so that you can refer to it. Um, also, if these are too big for your screen, you can you can press Command or Control minus your Control minus on the PC and a Control or uh, Command minus on a Mac, and it'll make your um, it'll make them a little bit smaller so that you can see them. Then Control plus within the um, browser window should work should work. Okay, so 
I'm going to turn on my. Oops, let's see if I can get this going. Oh, he's going. Okay. So I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to, um, and I'm going to uh, get a new share going for you guys. much tech everywhere. I was trying to get my, uh, I was trying to get a camera that I could, I have this on a, on a um, it's kind of weird. Can you guys see the side? I, I put it on a, um, a sculpture, um, a sculpture uh, wheel so that I could try to get it um, entirely into the um, window. All right. So so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to just give you guys. I'm going to do this as your your demo for the first part, and give you guys some feedback on how to go about um, how to go about drawing. I'm just putting these lines here, you guys, because my camera only shows me so much of this piece of paper that I have on my desk. And uh, let me see if I can put some more light on that for you guys. All right. Um, so you don't have to do that, but I'm going to do that. So, um, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I could just use a regular old. I'm going to use an, an HB, How's that go? HB, which means a hard, hard black. Is that focused? Here we go. Hard black number two, super light pencil. But what I want to do, what I'm, what I'm looking at is I'm looking at this double, the double point fabric um, drawing, and. Um, and you know, guys, if you actually, if you want, it's kind of a lot to do, but if you want, you could even draw like half of it. But um, so I'll just start out doing half of it because I want it to be visible on our screen. So, let's see. okay. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to use my lighter pencil, the lighter, um, the lighter weight pencil to establish the composition on the page. So now the, the images online are cropped. So they're not gonna be like the perfect um, shape for the drawing. But what I'd like to do is I'm just gonna go ahead and I'll just start up here and I'll kind of come over here, make a couple of points. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna use my gesture drawing skills to try, to try to get, you know, maybe I went too far, far away here. So it looks like I, I, my, I, didn't, I didn't put them close enough together. Okay, so I'm just going to really light touch. See how I'm just barely making a mark here? You guys may or may not even be able to see that mark. Okay. So I'm just what I'm trying to do is I'm just with my with just a really general uh, touch, light touch, just trying to get that that shape up on my on my page. And this is where you start paying attention to. So, for example, you can use your pencil to you know to lay it up against your your screen, and you can kind of kind of approximate the you know the the line work. So this is like a really really light touch. Realize these photos are not the, the perfect uh, kind of shape for looking at and drawing. But also, if you guys are, have, ever have trouble with the stuff that I put on the assignments, like too big, too small, definitely give me a heads up so that I can make it right. Or I can make some options. Maybe your computer situation is different. Okay. All right. So what I have here is just in, by way of organizing and kind of composing the the piece on the page i've just used a really light light pencil now i can use the same pencil but as a hb i kind of prefer not to so um i can go in with like a 3b here I'm gonna give it a little bit of a point for me 
But what I want to start out showing you guys in this exercise is how to identify different um, parts of the fabric. So up here, I know that my light, the light is coming from here, right? And as such, the first one of the first steps I, I want to do, which is which is what I did, which is the, the the gesture drawing. Now what I want to do is I want to start using some of those contour drawing skills that I developed earlier with you guys um, in terms of trying to um, identify different areas of highlight and shadow. So I'm trying to fit all my screens in front of me, guys. So I apologize for the delay. So what I'm what I've noticed is that. Um, and this is a fairly complex piece of fabric. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not uh, under any supposition that this will be easy. Okay. So now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the, um, some of the main shapes of the fabric down on the page. And I can come in here with my eraser and kind of clean it up a little bit. Now, in terms of perfection, in terms of getting it exactly right, I don't. I think that once you get the hang of identifying the hubs, which are here, which is where I'm starting, um, even if your angles are a little bit like loose or off, it, it's okay. It's not a big deal. Now, I've, I've noticed that there's like a big kind of a big shape that comes down here, like this, kind of straight down actually. And then, so here's what I'm doing. I'm just very loosely kind of pulling in some of these shapes using what I, what, what we, I remember when early on we, we were looking at those bottles and those um, rusty things. And I had you guys do a contour drawing of the shadow and the highlight. This is where this is gonna, um, okay, no problem, right? Um, this is where this is gonna come in. So I went from a really rough sketch to now I'm starting to refine it, right? I think Xander, you were talking about, um, I think probably most of you guys are doing that same exact thing. Now it looks to me like I've put this too far away. So I'm gonna move it over actually. So this is where my adjustment is gonna come in. And it's okay to clean it up as you go. Turn it down like this. I put this too too far over here. Okay, like that. And then if I notice that there's a little bit of an angle that comes out this way, ever so slightly, and down. And then there's that, that little fold when it hits the bottom. Okay. I feel like that's a pretty good representation of the shape. Now, if I were to lay my pencil up on the screen and then I lay my pencil this way, it looks like I, I, have, I have to pull this over a little bit and that looks more correct to me. Um, but I did notice that there, so I have a little bit of a highlight here, and then I have a dark zone that's kind of coming in here. And then I have another line that comes down, that really big dark line that comes down, it's kind of a big straight area that comes down like that. And then up over here, I have this other kind of triangle coming down this way. So what I'm doing, you guys, is I am, I am trying to identify the biggest kind of hills and shapes in this, in this, um, in this uh, fabric so that I can then start to give it even more dimension. And then it looks like, so you see what I'm doing is I'm kind of doing like little contour drawings of the highlights 
of the high, of the high points and the low points. Looks like that would come down there. So you see this is this part right here is that shadow. Um, and then here's that kind of a little curve that comes in like that. Okay, and then there's that one. All right. Now this I've noticed when I put my pencil up on my on my screen, it looked like it was a bit more like that. So um, I'm gonna kind of adjust that a little bit and I'll, I'll erase. So what I'm trying to get you guys to do is to use this preliminary point to really uh, try to um, try to get your drawing as close as you can um, in terms of proportion and, comp and in terms of your composition on the page. Try to get it as, as kind of zoned in as you can because the slower work is, is to come, which has to do with um, representing all of these folds. Now, if I come up here, I, I've noticed that I've got, come down here, sorry, not up. Okay. So, so something to pay attention to is that the, um, the fabric up behind, right, comes like this. And it, it's actually really fun to draw fabric, I think, once you get the hang of it. Um, Inside here, there's that big kind of a, of a dark, it looks like I've, it looks like mine's a little bit too wide, but I'm just gonna go with it. Um, it looks like I have um, this, this thing here, looks like it's coming down a little bit closer like that. Okay. Luckily you guys can fast forward this later when you're bored, so. And um, this is this is obviously too big in here, but I'm just going to kind of go with it. Okay, and there's that shadow area there, um, and then I've got here's where that that kind of push area is down below. It's going off my screen, but I'm going to focus up here for now. Um, okay, so if I go up to that hub, if you guys are looking, I've got that little dark space up there, and um, I've got one. You can even count them. One, two, three, four points of that kind of pull, right? That are going down this way. And then on this side, this one has that kind of funky lip on it because I think I bunched the fabric up over it, up and over. And this one has one, and then it has a two, that looks like it kind of comes like that and then kind of peters out a little bit. And then there's another one down below here and that's where the topography changes, okay? So now in terms of thinking about this as a, um, as a uh, cross contour drawing, I'm gonna adjust this a little bit here. Um, one of the things you could do is as a cross contour drawing, what you could do is you could say, well, um, I have, a, I have a, a roll that kind of goes like this and then it comes down and then like this. Okay. This right here has this kind of a feel where it comes in like this and then this can kind of comes like that, you see? So the cross contour is a way of describing the, the, the actual shape of it. And that'll help you understand like if it's flat or if it has dimension. So for example, this has some dimension and it becomes tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter as we go up. Okay. And then in here is relatively flat. And I'm being very, putting a very light touch and then up here, it's kind of flat, but it does have this thing that kind of turns and comes up. You guys see? Over here, you'll notice that there is a little bit of a, of a, of a, of a medium uh, value on the other side of this. I can kind of switch it up. It's just for my own information because eventually what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into this drawing. See, here's there's these little lumps on the top of that, right? 
and then it kind of comes down and then there's this valley in there, right? You see how I'm using cross contour right now? It's kind of just trying to get, get the general shape of my fabric. Down and up. And then we've got this really kind of beautiful dark form that comes down here. And like I was saying, if you guys wanted to just focus on this, you definitely could do that because I realized this might be intimidating to draw the whole thing, or it might be just difficult functionally to, um, to draw it looking at this computer screen. Um, over here, I've got some, I've got some, uh, I've got some fabric that's kind of diving down in here like this. Let's see if I can zoom in. Yeah. Uh, and then this, then it looks like there's another little kind of a fold that comes up here. So what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm, I'm kind of mapping out, mapping out my drawing. And that usually takes me the longest. I find that the part that's the more gratifying part is the, the development of value or the shading. Um, but it's only as gratifying as the work that I put in before to try to, um, to try to get as much of the structure of what I'm drawing down so that when I go in and I start shooting in values, I start shooting in some really deep shadows and that kind of thing, um, then uh, I don't feel, because that's when uh, some of the, if you, if you kind of tweak it or if it's a little bit off, that's when they're gonna really start to show up, all those kinds of things. So, uh, it, but the thing is that, remember, here's the hub, right? This is the hub or the, um, the um, tension point. Light coming from over here. Okay. Shadow over here in this side. Okay. And the 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 tension is coming this way. Okay. So to recap, did a quick gesture, refined it, and then I went back in with some cross contour to give it some, some kind of a, of a life, or at least a, a dimension. And I put these arrows in here just so that when you guys review this, you'll hopefully you'll be able to, um, to kind of, uh, you don't have to put this on your drawing is what I'm saying. I'm just drawing that for you guys to see. Okay. Now, um, what I do like to do first is I do like to establish some of my deep shadows first because I feel like once I can establish my deep shadows, then, um, well, let me put it this way. If I use the white of my paper as the white or the highlight of the drawing itself, which is what we're doing here, um, I, I tend to like to use the, um, the shadow as a point of reference for the mid-tones and the um, sort of the mid darks and mid lights. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start committing to some of these areas here. And uh, I'm gonna try to represent, now this one right here, you guys, is a 3B pencil. Can you see that? 3B. And, um, and the 3B pencil is, um, is as you guys know, it's, it's, it's kind of a medium, uh, soft pencil and it does, it will give you a really nice dense black, but you've really got to hammer it into the page. So what I want to do is I just kind of want to, I just kind of want to block in. I'm not putting a bunch of pressure on the pencil, just putting it sort of a medium amount on the pencil. And then what I'm doing is I'm kind of See, so, so the, when I did this, you'll see that I have this kind of form. So are you guys, I, 
notice how the, the shape of my shadows is also mimicking the shapes of my, um, of my uh, cross contour. And that's where the cross contour becomes kind of important. So I'm gonna bring this one down here is a nice dark shadow here. The other thing with fabric, you guys, is that there's oftentimes you'll have a really sharp distinction between the very dark, darkest point and the very lightest point. And it looks like I have, so that one looks like more of a crevice there. It also looks quite sharp. Okay. And I can come in later and, and sharpen those up. And those points are gonna be closer together, the closer they are to that pinch point. The further apart, the further they go down. And then we've got a little bit of a highlight here, which I forgot to put in. I mean, a, dark, a shadow here. Well, some little geometry there. And then it looks like that. It looks like I, I did that a little bit, was a little bit too ambitious with this. That looks a little bit more like it. And then I can start putting in the texture on that sheet. So um, take your time on this. But what I'm doing first, you guys, is I'm looking at parts of the drawing where it's very dense. And so uh, if, you were, if you're looking at the photo with me, you'll notice that I'm only starting on the areas that have a really kind of an intense density of, of shadow. And it's kind of fading. So, and then I'll, I'll cruise back in there with a, with a darker. So this is a 3B, right? So it's not, it's not really giving me all of the, um, the value that I'm really after, but that's okay. For now, I'm just trying to get get most of the um, most of the um, shadow and the values in there. So it looks like this guy comes over a little bit more here. So again, don't be shy. Just just adjust, right? Just adjust. Up. So you'll see, look, so you see how dense it is in this little pocket right there. Now, I, I would not be surprised if most of you are like, forget that. I'm going to go with the uh, with the single point. This guy's off his rocker. Man. But if you want to do the third, the three point, that I would be very happy. And then it looks like we have one kind of kitty corner from here down. So if we use that same technique, if I lay my pencil on my page or on the image and I put it that way, just to kind of get a general idea of the angle of where the other, the top of the other um, shadow starts, that's gonna help me out. So I use my pencil a lot just to find angles. Um, and you might even, you might, you guys might even consider doing a high definition print of this, and then you could use the print um, as a reference point instead of staring at the screen. Um, I, I do think it's, I, I'm still wrapping my head around the, the sort of zoom version of drawing because drawing's always been like a real life thing to me, so. But you know, it's so many people now learn so many things from like YouTube and it's kind of amazing. And then I've got then so what's interesting is there's this beautiful and so you'll see like if I start to really stare at those those deep shadow areas, they become lines. They just become these kind of triangular lines. There we go. Now this little guy right here, that's that that's that deep. Kind of crease that comes up, 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 and then it kind of vanishes over the edge 
over there. And it looks like there's a little something there. Now up here, got some shadow here. And then that just meets, that just kind of comes straight down. And it, it's, the, it's sort of the back end of this guy right here. And so if I look at my, look at my, the angle on my drawing, it's really quite nearly vertical. And I could, you know, just, could really kind of use my pencil in that way. My thinking is if you wanted to use your pencil, like just to get the angle, that's not cheating because you're the one that noticed it in the first place. I, f I feel like if you noticed it, man, go for it. Use whatever tool you need. Okay, so I noticed this is a little bit off. Now it's up to you whether or not you guys want to uh, draw the, the shadow on the wall. I'm gonna do a little bit of it just to give the fabric some play. And then up here. So one of the things about fabric is you'll be going to be drawing these kind of bizarre uh, geometric shapes, which don't on their own make sense. But in total, in some total, they will look like the fabric that you're drawing. And that's kind of one of those things. It's like when you look at something for so long or like it kind of like if you say a word too many times the same time, it just starts sounding strange. It's the same way when you look at something uh, for a really long time, it starts to just take on its own shape and I find myself like needing to take a break sometimes because I just get kind of lost um, in all the effort that I'm putting into paying attention. So um, so this is a highlighted area here. Now eventually you guys what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to leave these little lines here ever so slight and I can come in and erase them later but I usually just I just throw them in first, and then I kind of I kind of knock them down a little bit, but you can still kind of see them. And then um, there is I'm going to use the side of my pencil, and there's this kind of beautiful. And notice I'm doing an overhand technique right now. There's that kind of swath of medium tone. Now, again, I'm kind of going a little bit fast because I, I, um, I want to make something useful and not too time consuming to like go back and watch. And then, um, and so here's a nice example is down over here, you'll notice on the um, photo that there's this kind of beautiful crispy edge of the, of the fabric that's right here. Um, and then there's also this kind of, of a, of a, sub shadow underneath here. And then what I can use is my eraser. Some of you guys are getting into the using the eraser as a drawing tool, which is awesome. I'm going to fill in some of these medium tones here. Okay. All right. So now, this again is my 3B. If I go in with a 6B, let me, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna um, get my 6B here and kind of curve it down a little bit. So I have, when I do this, I'm really careful with the higher B pencils because they're really brittle. Um, and I don't, I, I'm, I'm literally just barely like scraping it because more, and the other thing too, guys, is I don't know um, if anyone ever mentioned, but the thing about drawing pencils is that if you drop the pencil on the ground, um, that can be that can be a bummer. Um, so the one thing I like to do is make sure my pencils are in a box or something like that, because if you drop the pencil, 
the binder that keeps the graphite connected to the wood can break or at least weaken. And then as you're sharpening, you guys have all seen like when you put your pencil into a uh, pencil sharpener, um, when the lead just kind of falls off, that's because the 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 glue that keeps the the um, the uh, the lead in there was either probably cracked or it was poorly established. Artist pens pencils are much nicer to deal with because there's more care taken in that. Okay, so now I have a 6B pencil and um, let's see, I'm trying to negotiate this lamp of mine. All right. Um, so now I've got my 6B pencil. Um, one of the things that I do, um, I do like to do is I'll use, I'll use another piece of paper or a, or a piece of cardboard and I can really get a nice sharp point on my pencil by just kind of finishing up my, my sharpening job by um, scrubbing it on the side like this and spinning it with my fingers. See. So now I have kind of a, now I have a nicer, um, a nicer point that I can use to get some deeper value into my, um, into my drawing. All right. Sorry guys, I'm fussing with the light because I want you guys to be able to see it. Well, let's just do that, okay? Um, so now what I can do is I can come in here with my 6B pencil and I think I'll zoom in so you guys can see. Um, with my 6B pencil, it's gonna allow me with a fairly light touch to get a pretty significant dark value. And now when I'm doing this, I'm only paying attention to the deepest, darkest parts of the drawing. I'm not gonna use this pencil to, I, I mean, you could take it, you could use a really light touch with it, but what I usually end up doing is you'll notice that in some of these spaces right here, they're not just uniformly super dark. Um, they have like a dark edge. And that's what I was talking about where you'll have some of the edges like this that are very, very sharp. Um, down in here, there's also some pretty intense, um, pretty intense shadow. Whoops, sorry, I was out of screen there, guys. So I'm being kind of, being kind of careful here. And I noticed that there's just ever so slightly, ever so slightly this line of shadow that comes down. Right there. Yeah, see? And that really gives it some life. It doesn't take a whole lot. Now up in this neck of the woods over here, this is the part where I can see I need a, a little bit of work because this bit right here, I want to represent this shadow up in there. I need to bring this a little bit closer. And so what I'd like to do is, thanks Elizabeth, we got to get you uploading your awesome drawings one of these days so we can check out your awesome work. Um, and so we're going to, so you see how I'm doing this, guys? I'm just, I'm just kind of using this pencil, and 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 there, this, this is the kind of pencil you want to use up against that, that real light highlight. Okay. So now what I'm doing is, I've got this beautiful dense color right here, and then if I back off on the on the pressure. I can start to develop some other values in there too. And they get lighter and lighter and lighter as they go, as it goes on. Now, notice my, my, my marks are not always going one way. I'm trying to, I'm at least trying to 
go with the energy of whatever it is that I'm that I'm dealing with here. I'm going to also kind of put a very slight line. I don't know why it's so relaxing, you guys. It just really is, especially drawing. Like sometimes I just draw. I don't even know what I'm going to draw, and uh, it just you know I don't even care sometimes. I just and even if it even if I just draw something, it's just like you know what doesn't matter. I'm feeling good. Uh, me too. I love Bob Ross. He's always talking about his pet squirrels and stuff. My mom wouldn't let me have a pet squirrel though. Tried. Didn't work out. All right. So um, one of the other things that, that is could be um, somewhat challenging. So over here, I'll do that same kind of thing. See, I have that really deep, deep, dark, dark shadow coming up here. I've got a nice sharp line in there, uh, but I want, that's a real deep chasm. So I'm gonna put in some more of that kind of dark, dark color. There we go. All right, now I'm just kind of, so you guys notice that on that photograph, there's this real sharp edge between the highlight here and the deep shadow there. I can bring this down like that. I'm not gonna fuss with the push. I can do that on Wednesday for you guys. Um, and yeah, so then I'm just gonna, and now I can just start, I can, I can do dense, dense lines here. I'm gonna back off a little bit, back off a little bit, blend it in. It looks like I have a little, I'll show you how to use the eraser. To, so it looks like I have a little bit of a, of a, of a, uh, a wrinkle in there. Now, what I'm noticing, you guys, is I'm looking at that photo that this shape is kind of like almost parallel to this guy right here. And then there is this kind of kind of a, a stop. And then there's another there's another value that hits it, right? Um, there's also this other, you know, kind of a little uh, doodad coming over here at that. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna start to come in here and start, so it's getting darker here, moving to the lighter as we go to the left. And again, I'm gonna put this up. I am, I am recording it to the cloud. Um, goodness forbid I lose it, but I, I, think, I think I will, will, it will be able to be capped. Um, and then I'll post it as soon as I get the cloud's message that it's it's been loaded for me. I just run out of space on my computer, guys, so I'm sorry. Now, here's the other thing I wanted to um, uh, mention is now, so most of this thing here, that there's all these, there's gonna be all these little wrinkles, these kind of oddball wrinkles, and that's where it gets kind of abstract. And so, for example, it doesn't really make any sense, but you can use your pencil um, and just kind of twist it around, get some of those lines in there. And, and when I'm doing this, I'm, I'm kind of just looking at them like, a, like just, you know, just a little scribble or a, what, what, is the, what is the shape of that particular scribble as opposed to something else. Now notice here, I've got a bunch of wrinkles in the, in the, uh, in the um, fabric. So I'm gonna use my cross contour technique, not to necessarily make a bunch of lines, but I'm gonna use my cross contour technique to do my shading. And so in a very subtle way, what will end up happening is um, there's two things, in, two things are indicating the, um, the dimension of the fabric is number one, the value of the mark that I'm putting down, but then also the direction of the value that I'm putting down can describe the surface. And so I'm kind of mixing up my techniques here a little bit. It looks like I got a little more work to do on this guy right here. It looks like he's gonna come up a little bit darker. There we go. And uh, and then it looks like I've got um, I've got a uh, here we are. Oh yeah, and then I got this guy here. All right. So um, and so now what I could do I've got a five B. What else do I have? Here, I'm just looking through my pencils, you guys. Ideally, I think I could use my, my 3B. 
you know, I'm going to use my 3B on this. And uh, what I can do is I, I can just kind of come in here and I'm just going to, I'm just going to add in a generic, a generic uh, color onto my uh, fabric. And what this will do is this will sort of knock that contrast down a little bit. I'll come back in later and, uh, and take care of that. I don't, I don't really like how this, this line is, this little line that I put in there is kind of fooling the eye. I don't really like that so much. So, because it's a very subtle, um, very subtle uh, shadow. And then we have a nice crisp line on this edge here. Um, not so much on this side, but a little bit, a little bit. Looks like looks like this is a little bit too humped over, but um, see. So I'm putting in a little bit of value there, and uh, I'm just. I guess it's like what I like to say is like sneaking up on it, you know. Sneak up on it. You don't have to like jump in and kind of. There we go. Yeah. So now, now, and so now what I'm doing is I'm sneaking up on my highlight areas, right? I got a little highlight area there. I got a little highlight area there. I got some highlights coming up over here. Kind of nice. Um, this thing right here looks like it's casting a little bit of a shadow up there. Um, and then I've got this right here. This is in shadow as well. I'm going to kind of shoot that in there. Looks like I have a little bit more work to do on this, on this shadow area in there. So I'm going to get my 6B. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to start to get that kind of resolved, which kind of comes up like that. And uh, got some kind of odd wrinkles in there, which I can kind of I can hint at with just a couple of scribbles. No big deal. Right. And I can hit it right there. Again. Um, so I have a real, real nice highlight coming on here now. Keep in mind, I want to keep that edge nice and clean. So I'm going to come back in there after that one uh, exercise that I did. Okay, Elizabeth, no problem. And, uh, yeah. All right. And so now what I can do is I can use my eraser, you guys, and I can come in here and kind of clean stuff up a little bit, right? Kind of get, get some of those highlights back in there. Some of those highlights coming in. There's a highlight coming down here. So I'm just going to use my eraser as a drawing tool. Okay. And then uh, I can use my 3B to give this a little bit more shadow coming in here like that. And it looks like I got a little bit of dimension to this. I can give it that. Okay. So um, I think I'm going to leave it there, you guys. Um, and hopefully that will help help you guys uh, with your um, with your uh, fabric drawing. And um, again, you can pick your own battles in terms of what you what you choose to draw uh, when you do your own um, still life. But these are just some some techniques very similar to the techniques that we used on the pair drawing um, in the last um, module. Uh, and so. Again, you can also use your viewfinder if you want to, to crop in on one part of this fabric. Uh, but again, think about using your gesture to establish your drawing. Um, think about your, um, your using your contour to identify some of those larger shapes. Use your cross contour as you want. See like this, like I did just to remind me of the shape and then shoot in with a medium weight pencil like a 3B or a 2B, but then bump it up to a 6B or a 7B or a 5B or whatever, right? And get some of those really beautiful uh, shadows in there, okay? So um, I'm gonna leave you guys with that. And, um, and also just make sure that um, you can get me your stuff uh, uploaded. So I wanna make sure everybody, because I screwed up the, um, the upload link on the value. So I'm giving you guys a little extra time 
let's just say till next Wednesday, uh, next Wednesday, this Wednesday, please try and get your value drawings put up. Okay. So it's my bad over the break. Um, but um, hopefully that'll help you guys get started on your value studies. All right. Any questions or comments that you guys have for me before we break off? I have a question. Yeah. I was just wondering um, how I can see like the recording from the last class because I wasn't able to do the assignment because I couldn't find the, the Zoom. Yeah, the um, the um, the recording should be up on our, um, I found, I finally got Zoom to provide me the link. I had to do some messing around, but I finally got a active link. Let me know if it works. I, I just put it up today um, and it's in our value module, the one right before this one. Okay, it says I needed a, like a code or something. Oh, it did? Yeah, I, I did click on that today. Weird. Okay, let me troubleshoot that. Oh, it's always something. So let me um I, the zoom the zoom thing is uh so I'll I'll troubleshoot that um and then um try to get try to figure out what the code is and I'll provide that. But thanks for letting me know, Elena. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Oh yes, Brian, yes. I don't know if you're still there or not, but yes, you can use two, four, six, you know, yeah, absolutely. Let me try and troubleshoot this uh, this Zoom thing for you guys. Host and the to the clip. 